Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Wisdom in the Word. We're glad that you're joining us today. Uh, We hope that you are enjoying our study together in the book of Hebrews. We hope that you'll find your Bibles and join us in Hebrews chapter number five today. This is week 14 in our study of the book of Hebrews. Uh, We hope that you will uh, join us as we continue on. It's been a really enjoyable study, a very uh, rich and uh, and enriching uh, study as through the book of Hebrews. If you're there, um, please um, sign in underneath. Let us know that you're there via Facebook or YouTube. Um, Again, we want to encourage you to download, um, to subscribe to the podcast and download the audio. Uh, This is a little bit easier uh, to be able to navigate and have it on your phone. In fact, as you subscribe, it'll even send you a notification when it's available uh, to let you know that uh, a new episode is uh, is up and ready. We're going to give everybody just an opportunity to be able to jump on today. Here's a couple of um, reminders uh, while we're doing that. Uh, first off, tonight uh, we do have CPO. Uh, community uh, prayer outreach will uh, take place at 630 at the church. So we hope that you'll join us as we go out and make contacts and uh, create opportunities, gospel conversations with folks in our communities. Please continue uh, to do that and help us out. Uh, with that, we've got uh, prayer walks and uh, prayer books that need to be prayed over and follow up that needs to be done and a lot of different things that um, would would help us out uh, greatly. So there's a way for you to be involved uh, in our outreach. And then uh, we hope that you'll continue to pray uh, this week. We've got a lot of it's a busy schedule uh, Wednesday of this week. Um, tomorrow, uh, I'll have the opportunity to preach at Faith Baptist Church in Wesley Chapel. Um, we're going to have um, we're up there for their. Uh, summer. They're bringing in different pastors each week to be able to preach uh, to their church. And so uh, it's a blessing to have the invitation to be able to go up there. I hope you'll pray uh, for me as I make your way. And then on Thursday, we'll be back here uh, our normal time um, with your answers to your questions. We hope that you'll join us uh, for that podcast as well. Uh, Reminder, Wednesday night service is uh, seven o'clock. We hope you'll join us for our midweek Bible study and prayer meeting. All right, enough with those uh, little um, reminders on what's happening here at our church. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter number five and give everybody just a few seconds here to jump on. And then we'll officially begin the uh, audio podcast version of uh, Wisdom and the Word here on this Tuesday. Welcome to Wisdom and the Word. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Uh, this is our Tune Up Tuesday. And on Tuesdays, we take time to study the Bible, and uh, we're systematically working through, verse by verse, the book of Hebrews. We hope you'll join us in the book of Hebrews as we read together Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 5 today, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man taketh his honor, this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Now, in Hebrews 5, it's kind of an extension of what we read in chapter number 4. As we ended in chapter number 4 last week, we found, we looked at the passage in verses 14 to 16 that talked about uh, Jesus being greater than high priest. That is, he's not just greater than the high priest, he's greater than high. He's the greater, greater priest. He's the higher high priest. And um, what a great thought it was there in verses 14 to 16, as it encourages us to understand that we can go to the Lord and our faith is rooted in the person of Jesus Christ. Well, now as we go into chapter number five, the thought really continues. It opens with the word for, which is a connecting thought to the previous chapter. The chapter division kind of interrupts the thought, as well as many uh, chapter divisions do. This passage, this chapter is going to continue to talk about Jesus and his high priestly role. Most specifically in verses one to four, what we're going to find today is that this section I have entitled your average high priest your average high priest. What do I mean by your average high priest? Well, what I mean is the writer of Hebrews is now going to set us up with and remind us of what uh, the what the high priest was in the Old Testament. And as he reminds us of what the high priest was in the Old Testament, he's setting up a comparison 
to Jesus. Now, the following verses, beginning in verse number five, are going to be a comparison uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ of what was stated in verse number four. So he is basically establishing a baseline in verses one to four so that he could prove and show to us the superiority, the greater, the higher aspect of Jesus' high priestly role why Jesus is a better high priest than the high priest we had in the Old Testament or any human high priest that we've ever had. So verses one to four of Hebrews five, talk about your average high priest. Let's look at the verses today and find some interesting and helpful truths as we study the word of God. The Bible says in verse number one, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. The first thing I want you to see in verse number one is the connection of this priest, the connection of the average high priest. What is the connection? Look at what he says. For every high priest taken from among men, that is every high priest that's chosen, that's ever been chosen, was chosen from among men, among people, ordinary creatures being created, by God. All made in the image of God. We're not um, going to demote man in his image. Man was made in the image and the likeness of Christ. He bears the fingerprints of Jesus, of our creator. But if you look, he says, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men. That is, it was among men and for men. So the connection that he establishes for us right at the front of this chapter is that the average high priest, your average guy, is connected to all of us because he is chosen from among humanity. Now, along that comes some limitations, and he'll develop this as we go. Look at the rest of the verse. He says, from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. So a high priest was a man chosen for men to do things before God. And he says that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. That's what his job was. But he's trying to make the the connection here with us that this is a, we're dealing with even as a, even every high priest that's ever been chosen was no more than a man, was just a man was a a creature, a creation of Almighty God. And as a creature and creation of Almighty God, they were they were a chosen from among men to do things for men before God. So that's the that's the thought here in this particular text. And what do they offer? Well, they offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now, what do we know about the high priestly position? Well, we know it was uh, a wonderful position that only, you know, one person could serve as the high priest, and they had a a particular responsibility in so serving. Uh, It was a very honored position, but it was still humans, men, no more than just men who were chosen to be able to serve in this position. Now, this thought develops, continue on in verse number two. The reason why he highlights that is in verse number two, he talks about the compassion of the priest, the compassion of the priest. This man that was chosen from among men, for men, before God, all right, can have compassion. Look at what he says in verse two. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. So the reason why one of the greatest things about the high priest was that the high priest was not above men. He was chosen from among men. The high priest wasn't chosen, um, wasn't chosen to do things really for God. They were chosen to do things for men because men had a need. Men would bring him sacrifices. They would bring him offerings and he would offer sacrifices and offerings for men. He was doing it in the presence of God, but he was chosen from among men. And he says in verse number two that this man who's been chosen from among men can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. This man that's been chosen from among men can look at other people and he can have compassion. He can look on them that are ignorant, that don't know what they should be doing, and he can have compassion. He can look on them that are out of the way, that is those that are not walking like they should, not walking with God, and he can look on them and he can have compassion on them. Why can he have compassion on them? Look at the end of verse two. For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. 
The reason why the high priest was chosen from among men was so that he could have compassion on people who were also men, men and women, mankind. And the priest could look upon people in their situation and he could have compassion because he himself is a man. Now, what happens when religion gets involved? What happens when piousness and and uh, people's superiority gets in the way? Well, they sometimes think that they're greater than the average man. But that's not the reason why God chose Aaron. And that's not the reason why God chose the priesthood. God chose Aaron and God chose the priesthood, men, to do things for men before God so that they could have compassion on people because they are people themselves and they have their own problems. Now, again, this is tying us back to Hebrews chapter number four. Why could Jesus be touched with the feelings of our infirmities? Well, because he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And again, remember, he's still continuing the thought of Jesus as our higher high priest. One of the great things about the fact that Jesus, worshiping Jesus as the Son of God and as God, is that God came in human flesh and he walked among us. One of the reasons why God chose men in the first place to occupy this position was because men could could have compassion on their fellow mankind because they themselves have their own infirmities. So we see in verse number two, the compassion of the priest. Then in verse number three, we see the cleansing of the priest. Notice he says, and by reason hereof, by reason hereof of what? By reason of the infirmities, by reason of having problems himself, by reason of having sin himself. And by reason hereof, you notice what he says, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer sins. So when the priest offered a sacrifice, he didn't just offer it for the people that were coming to him because he was no better than them. He was also offering it for himself. The priest needed sacrifices too. The priest needed to offer bulls and goats. The priest needed to be able to offer sacrifices because he himself had infirmities. He had sins that needed to be cleansed. And so in this particular passage, he follows up in verse number three and says, one of the things, the reasons why God chose these men to do things from among men, to do things for men before God was so that they could have compassion. Secondly, so that they would be cleansed themselves because they needed cleansing. Now, in verse 2, we saw a likeness. Now, in verse 3, we see a contrast. And all this is going to be drawn out in the next section. But when we look at Jesus, what do we know of Jesus? Well, Jesus became a man so that he could be here and be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, much as Aaron was chosen from among men because he could have compassion on men who had the same issues, the same problems. But now we see a contrast. The man that was chosen in the Old Testament to be the high priest, he had himself his own sins. And when he offered sacrifices, he had to offer sacrifice for his own sins. But Christ was different, right? Christ had no sins. Even though he walked among us and he was tempted, he did not have to suffer from the same infirmities that we did because he was completely triumphant over it. So he did not have to offer sacrifice. When Jesus died, Jesus did not also die for himself. He did not offer sin and sacrifice for himself. No, he offered it for everyone else, different than the priest. This is what makes Jesus greater. He's a higher high priest. He's a greater high priest. Why? Because when he offered himself for sin, he was the sacrifice, and he did not have to make sacrifice for himself. Jesus was not offering atonement and sacrifice to cover his sins because Jesus had no sin. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us. So that's what he's teaching us here in verse number three, the cleansing of the priest, that the priest not only had to offer for the people, but he had to offer for himself. And then in verse four, he talks about the calling of the priest. Now, again, remember, he's setting us up here in verses one to four, talking about your average high priest so that he can then talk about the qualities that make Jesus greater. And he'll do that in a moment. But let's look at verse four, the calling of the priest. Look what he says. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Now, here's his point. No man chooses to be a priest on his own. He's called by God. He's chosen by God to be a priest. 
He doesn't say, well, you know what? I think I'll be a priest. No, that's not the way that it works. That's not the way the Old Testament priesthood worked. They couldn't choose to be a priest. They were called to be a priest. They were in a specific lineage. They had to qualify in order to be able to be a priest. So verse four, no man taketh this honor unto himself. That is, you don't get to choose to be a priest, but he that is called of God. Remember, Aaron was chosen. God separated Aaron and said, you're going to be the beginning of a lineage of priests. And now all of this is done in the framework following from chapter four, verses 14 to 16 of talking about the greater high priest or the great high priest, Jesus, and, and kind of setting us up and, and just kind of giving and saying, okay, here's a picture of the average high priest. Here's the picture of the average guy. Let's talk about why Jesus is greater than the average guy. And next time on Wisdom in the Word, as we pick up in verse number five next Tuesday, we'll continue on with this study and we'll see why Jesus is a greater high priest. So as we look here today, we hope you'll continue in your study. If you have questions that you'd like to submit to us for our Thoughtful Thursday episode, we want to encourage you to be able to do so. Please make sure to uh, drop them to me via email or uh, in, uh, in some other way that you can get them to us. We'd be glad to take those and add them to our list as we answer our listeners' questions. And we hope that you've enjoyed Hebrews 5, 1 through 4 as we talked about your average high priest today. Now that we know what the average guy looked like in the Old Testament, it can show us how Jesus is greater. We hope that you've enjoyed this Tune Up Tuesday episode of Wisdom in the Word. We hope the rest of your day is great. God bless you.